But for, for rural, I mean, if the idea is like people literally in the middle of nowhere, it's there. Yeah. The, the, the solution exists. Yeah. You don't have to wire yeah. anything. You don't have to do anything. No. You don't have to, you don't have to tear up roads. Oh, let's see. Um, I mean, the, the, the only other thing which is going to be interesting is I think the, there were some leaks about the, um, the, the mini star um, star oh, yeah. receiver that will be coming out that'll be very portable uh, and that'll be interesting because I've, I've got you know my bigger dish mounted to the inside of my model y right now and it's working really quite well but still it's, it's a bit bulky it's a bit yeah. of a power hog and everything else yeah uh, and it's gonna be nicer to have a, a smaller more affordable one to be able to bring on trips um, more easily so i'm looking forward to when that becomes available and it'll probably be more than enough capable for anyone that's on the move so Elon may or may not have been sandbagging, you know, all along. He said, look, this is just a, a product. These uh, Starlinks are just a product for the folks that can't get good reception. And it's never yeah. going to be for the average user in the city because blah, 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 it's blah. It's going to take, you know, now that they have the right number of satellites up there, I think you're going <laughs> to see an explosion. And when they get um, Starship going, and they start putting up the the, the it, version it two. The, yeah. It's going to be a big change. So they they, they last night they launched another twenty two twenty three um, okay. direct to sell satellites uh, out of Vandenberg. Right. So that's coming more and more. And of course, the other thing that's just you know you, you've got the this rural uh, act to to try to bring high speed internet to to rural communities. I reported that this morning. <laughs> Forty two billion dollars and like still nothing. How many billions of dollars and still no superchargers? You know, what, seven or something like seven, that? Seven. Government at work. And yeah. it's just, you know, it, and, and it's because what they did, a typical government kind of thing is like they put in some wording that says it has to be hardwired. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so it's like, oh, so you're the geniuses that know, you're telling us what the solution has to be ahead of time without necessarily knowing that there could be other potential solutions. And we know there's a potential solution. And for that amount of money, you know, every, like, um, every other person could be given like a Starlink dish. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, yes. But the thing <laughs> is, is that we, we know that if you had that amount of money thrown at the problem, the Starlink dishes wouldn't cost $500 a piece. They, exactly. they would be costing like, you know, 50 bucks a piece. At exactly. That point exactly. At scale, it, it would be absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, so, so my concern with that particular story that I gave this morning, after I did the story and mm -hmm. I thought later, I thought, Aren't, by the time they, if these are only installed 100% by 2030, which is what the article said, won't they be completely obsolete? Won't people just actually have already bought? Oh yeah, yeah, their yeah. It, it'll be absolutely, absolutely obsolete. So, uh, and you know, at that point by 2030, you will have so many Starlink satellites up there yeah, right. that that you know you you will have way more people per cell. So right now it's limited to the number of people you can have per yeah. cell because yeah. there's just not quite enough coverage. Right. But you'll get more and more. And again, you know, Starlink was never designed for the city. It right. really was designed for rural communities and those areas that are like between rural and city areas where the fiber is like not so good, which is like my example is the fiber right. is crap where I am. Right. My neighbors are always out, their speeds are slow, and oh. it's much better for me to actually use Starlink, even though oh. I'm kind of in a city, <laughs> sort of. Yeah, yeah what, what you'd say a, a city area. Um, and But for, for rural, I mean, if the idea is like people literally in the middle of nowhere, it's there. It's yeah. The, the solution exists. You don't have to wire yeah. anything. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. You don't have to, yeah. you don't have to tear up roads. You, you don't have to, you know, tear up the soil. You don't have to do any sort of destruction to the environment. I mean, they should literally stop. Out. They should literally stop that entire project immediately. Maybe, maybe this. Yeah, is, they should. Maybe they this should. is something that uh, the next president could do. Just stop the project immediately and just start putting in Starlinks, and they'd be done uh, in they'd no be done. They'd so be really quickly. And, okay. and then as soon as soon as you dedicate something like that, then they would be able to ramp up the production line to start dropping way more of these things. <laughs> Okay. And, you know, it's like, well, we need to put more satellites up there. Okay, we can okay. ramp that thing up as well. And then we can start launching rather than twice a week out of the Cape, you know, two or yeah, you know, maybe we get another pad or something like that set aside for it. We could be so, launching almost daily if you want right. to get them up. So this is, a, this, is a, this is a question that maybe nobody listening mm -hmm. cares about but me, but I have had this on my mind forever. If you have a Starlink, mm -hmm. a satellite dish, you have the dish, okay, the biggest one, well, the ones that's on these ships, I guess, so mm -hmm. the ones that are on the ship, they just have the one dish, and that serves all the people. Yeah, on yeah, 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 yeah. So, so they, so basically, I mean, businesses are able to do this as well. So we're not right. just talking about um, 
uh, individual homes, res residential right. rural, but also rural companies can do it. So okay. if you get the professional dish, they're they're dedicated. You can serve a lot of workers uh, a lot of, at the same time with the bigger dish. Now on the cruise ship, because they have it's basically a small city, right. they have more than one of those dishes. They have okay. at least a dozen or more I kind of around there, but they they can handle it. And it's just a question of how much you're willing to pay um, on a monthly subscription to be able to get that. All right. So, so the reason so the reason I cared about that was I was wondering about these you know, sub sub equatorial Africa location easily, easily. So you, and, and, and you can do that without impacting us in the US. Yeah. And so you it, can it, it doesn't it doesn't affect our bandwidth because they're right. flying over there for free doing nothing. Right. So if you yes. put if you put in these the not even the mini dish, let's talk about the dish yeah. Right now. Yeah. Put that dish in. You can do a whole village. A whole village. Yeah, yeah, whole easily. Village. You, you could, you could, you could set that up, and you could do a whole village. And again, the thing is, that's not affecting our bandwidth. One, yeah, bit. yeah, it's sitting there, like not doing anything because it's over an area that there's no subscribers. So you throw some subscribers down there, and not only do they get it, it starts subsidizing the whole system, the whole which means it's even better for us. Which means the rates are going to go down more because the the more utility you get out of each of those satellites, then the lower the cost goes down. And so if you start looking for all these places in the world where people have absolutely no internet and you figure out a way to get that down there, it's going to be better for us. I mean, seriously, I, I bet if they spent that 42 billion, you know, towards what was going on in Africa, it would yeah. actually be cheaper for the projects of doing it here because you're, sub, you know, getting the whole system to go. It, so, absolutely. Okay. To show, to show my yeah. complete lack of, of, yeah. of, of understanding, if you put a dish down mm -hmm. in the middle of that village, does there have to be any wiring at that point, or is it 100% wireless to the you, person's phone? Okay, so the only thing you would need, see at this point, I don't, you don't even need, you won't necessarily need the ground stations because they're they're doing the inter-satellite communication. So okay. right now, um, what you need to do is you need to be able to, to hit a ground station, but you don't have to anymore. That's why it's working on cruise ships. <laughs> okay. Because they try to find the ground stations that actually connect to the internet from that. Okay. And then you would have that dish and then all you would need is, um, is a Wi-Fi router. Wi -Fi you can set up a mesh of some sort, I see. or you could potentially use that to have like a smaller tower that's able to broadcast. Uh, so okay. you could potentially use that to come up with like cell phone service, uh, voice over internet cell phone service that like in the middle of nowhere, you could set up a cell tower. And then the connection to that cell tower could be done with Starlink. <laughs> so, so that would be, and you could just drop them anywhere and they would be solar powered and everything. So you don't need any infrastructure. You could come in with a helicopter and just like drop it down in, you know, a nice high point where everyone is there, have a Starlink antenna on one side that, that have a little um, uh, power wall on there. It, it, you, you could easily make these things deployable anywhere you want it's, in the world. It, it seems to me like that would be something that the UN could actually do. Yes. Provide yes. value. Absolutely. Absolutely. They could. They, that they, might be the first you, thing you like ever. Now, let's remember, three quarters of the planet is covered with water. Yes. Right. Okay. So yes. when the Starlink satellites are, yes. are, are going in an orbit, yeah. you know, over time, only 25% of the time are they over land. The majority right. of the time they're over water they're right. over unpopulated areas and right. they're getting absolutely no value right now of that 25 percent of the time they're over land there's a good chance they're over countries where you're not allowed to use starlink right russia china right. you right. know some some other countries that have yet to allow them in there um and so so that means each of those satellites is probably only being used maybe 10 percent of the time the other 90 percent of the time is doing nothing and what we need to do is like, let's try to get more utility out of it. So if we yeah. can double the utilization of that thing, then that just brings rates down for everyone. So we're, we're not talking about that suddenly, oh my God, if they start turning on in Africa, Starlink's going to be slower for me here right. in, in, no, no, in no, Florida. No. It's like, no, it's not. Yeah. No, no, it's not. You know, I'm not going to feel the impact from that thing. And, and what I'm going to see is I'm going to probably see my monthly bill go down now. And I might see my service go up because, you know, now that so many more people are, are wanting to use it around, they're going to start wanting to throw more satellites up there. Right, so, right, right, right. Yeah, it, it, it is really one of those things that um, is to benefit everyone, the, the more utility we get out of it. It's like, that, that's a waste that 90% of the time it's probably not being utilized. Right. And as, and as Elon has said, there's like nothing you could do for those folks that would bring them more into the 21st century than the communication the information. Exactly. That's available. Yeah, information. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Holy mackerel, Scott. Well, I never knew that this is where we'd end up, uh, mm -hmm. where we started with you wearing some futuristic goggles and taking us around a tour of your facility there in 
Harbaugh. No, this is not future. Harbaugh. This has been around for close to a decade. Different versions right. of it. Yes, it's the most recent version of it, but everyone's just got to kind of kind of get with it. And um, we made, and we VR made sure. is is the the, the the future. Unfortunately, not enough people understand the the power of using virtual reality. Yeah. Outside of gaming, when you actually yeah. use it for engineering, the medicine. Oh no! The, the, they train. Being they able train to doctors. do reviewing, re review, design review is incredible with these things. Right. You, you find problems with your your design like that. Mm. You're able to get people to understand what you're doing like that. Right. And that's a whole idea, and it's a literally an order of magnitude faster than doing it that way. So more and more people should really look at it. And the thing is, these things are cheap. Okay, yeah. getting a VR setup which is like 4K resolution, that whole thing and all the trackers and everything in. It's cheaper than the laptop that you're buying to run it on. Okay, <laughs> you can afford it. These things are showing up under Christmas trees all right. the time. And I I'm see. not just talking about the rich kids that are getting yeah. it. Just about every middle class kid probably is, is getting that as yeah. a present for either birthday or Christmas or something like that. So it's not like a huge investment. Well, isn't uh, the, the Microsoft uh, Microsoft? The, no, the Amazon one. No, no. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, no, Alpha. 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 Meta has one. I mean, Meta, they, they, Meta, they all Meta. have. They have these. We also have like the, the, the Magic Leap, which is the AR kind of thing. You know, this, this thing here is like real VR. Because oh, real VR. Okay. I, I joke is like we're, we're building these factories that don't exist yet, so there's nothing to augment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but there are cases where you want the augmented reality because you might be putting it in a space where you're thinking of retrofitting. So you're right. more of a brownfield situation where you want to go out there and say, I'm thinking of throwing these robots down around here. Are they going to fit? Yeah. You know, what are going to be the issues? So there's advantage and it's it's so cheap. It's um, that uh, anyone that is, is doing any sort of design or thinking of doing factory layouts, you've got to be moving. But basically what we're doing, you know, this thing they call the Omniverse that yes. NVIDIA has been talking about. You're like, you're doing a what? We've been doing it for a decade now. For I mean, basically what you saw is what NVIDIA wants to do with Omniverse. We do it already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've actually, uh, uh, down in San Diego at the uh, at the Orange County Fair, they were showing how the military already uses uh, mm -hmm. the virtual reality classes to uh, train train the troops. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. You, you can do it for a lot of things. In, in this case, we're, we're using it to, to help uh, factory designers understand how the factory's going to work or not work, you know? Not work, <laughs> They yeah. come up with a design. Because that's what you want to catch early, right? It's like, oh, that's a bad design. Uh, we, we, we've got to change this <laughs> before you before you've already routed all the wires. Mm -hmm. Okay, Scott. Well, thank you so much. I know you've got a, a another thing to do here, real quick. Mm -hmm. We did learn today how to correctly pronounce Carmel. If you happen to be uh, yeah. east of the Mississippi, and uh, Carmel, if you're west of the Mississippi, if so you're hoity toity, it's Car yeah, Carmel, right? But well, I, I have just, to admit, I have to Carmel. admit that I have wanted to live and have my address in Carmel by the sea, just because it sounds so hoity-toity. Hoity-toity, yep. There you go. All right. Hey, thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Yep. And, okay, to all of you out there, and to all of you out there, it's been great talking to you.